This is the new all-electric Vauxhall Astra. No, seriously, this. This is the new electric Astra. Have a look at this thing. It wasn't many years ago that I'd preferred to have had a rash than a new Vauxhall, but a lot's changed in recent years, as you can quite clearly see. And there is a lot to talk about with this new electric Astra. A lot, like the new design, like the heavily revised drivetrain, like the bold claims around range and efficiency. But before we get into all of that, I just want to say this. For me, this is a segment of electric car without a champion. When it comes to these sort of C-segment family hatchbacks, what have we got so far? Well, we've got the VW ID3, which is pretty good, but has a very annoying interior. We've got the Aura Cat, which is interesting, but hamstrung by range and charging speeds. We've got the Renault Megane, which actually is excellent, but as far as I can tell, they've barely built any of them. This segment is there for the taking. Is the Astra the car to do it? Let's have a poke in a prod and find out. This is the new Vauxhall Astra, electric, and this is the fully charged show. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. So then, new Astra Electric. Do you know what? I'm quite excited about this. This is something of an unsung icon of British motoring. 1980 is when this car first hit our road. Since then, they've sold over three million of them. That's just in the UK as Vauxhall, many more overseas, where Vauxhall is, of course, Opal. Worth noting that this generation of Astra first appeared last year with the petrol version, because this car is available as petrol, diesel, PHEV, and electric. Like most Stellantis brands, Vauxhall are employing a multi-energy platform to sort of economize and streamline their manufacturing of different fuel types of cars. More on that in a little bit. This is arriving later this year, around summertime, and a little bit later than that, we're gonna get the estate version. Oh, yes. And the big picture here, the big story, is that Vauxhall is really not hanging about when it comes to electrification. They wanna be a pure electric brand by 2028. That's seven years earlier than the UK government deadline. And already now, we've got Corsa, Mocha, Astra, and two vans, all with electric options from Vauxhall. That's almost every model that Vauxhall offers in the UK. So pretty impressive stuff. The other big story for me when it comes to this car, when it comes to Vauxhall, when it comes to Stellantis, is that the Gen 1 Stellantis EVs were very interesting, quite nice to look at, but just slightly hamstrung by a slightly underwhelming platform. Well, is that the case here? Or have they addressed that with a few little tweaks and updates? Let's find out. So let's start with a little chat about this design because again, I really like the way this thing looks. At the front, we've got this visor motif. This is central to Vauxhall's new design language. This housing at the front for the headlights and the grille, as it were. Uh, this, by the way, inspired by the old Opal Manta. Remember the Opal Manta? Yeah, that's what that looks like. And it is a bit muscle car-y, actually. Quite a sharky, pointy face. Also really like this central crease down the middle of the bonnet. That's another key motif of Vauxhall's design language now. They call it the compass sort of cross pattern, which you can see in its face. You see it again inside the car. Coming around the side, can I just say it makes me really happy to see a new C-segment electric hatchback? This sort of car, when I was growing up, Ford Focuses, Vauxhall Astras, VW Golfs, they absolutely dominated the market, and now everyone's obsessed with these big whopping SUVs. You don't see that many of them, so it just makes me happy to see a hatchback with no, look, there's no plastic cladding around the wheels. It's not pretending to be an SUV. It's not seven meters long. It's just a medium-sized family car. These wheels, these are specific to the EV variant. They're not proper, proper aero wheels, but they'll probably stick on a few extra miles of range relative to the ones that you get on the petrol variant. Nice black roof, keeps the eye drawn down to this lower section of the car, keeps things looking quite low slung. I like this kind of shark fin design at the back here as well. Underneath there, the battery is 51 kilowatt hours. That's usable, 51 kilowatt hours. Now, here's the really interesting part. WLTP range quoted at 258 miles. Now, quick maths, 258 miles, 51 kilowatt hours of usable battery. That, my friends, is five miles to the kilowatt hour, if true. And even if it's not, let's say that WLTP is being generous. Let's say the real world range is 220 miles. 
that is still four and a half miles to the kilowatt hours. What I'm saying is this thing looks to be bloody efficient. And that is extremely good to see. I'm so delighted to see a brand like Vauxhall not just lumping in a huge battery to give you good range, but being clever, being efficient. And they do claim that this car is a lot more efficient than early Stellantis models. Now, obviously, we're going to have to test those claims for ourselves when it comes time to drive this thing a little bit later on in the year, and we'll reserve judgment until then. But if indeed it is as efficient as the numbers suggest, if they've managed to pull that sort of efficiency out of a multi-energy platform car, then I really feel like Vauxhall are onto a winning recipe here. I suppose a potential downside to the multi-energy platform is interior space. As we know, bespoke EVs that are built from the ground up as EVs get the most cabin space because you can push the wheels way out to the front. And as we can see, there is a fair amount of overhang at the front of that car. There is a fair amount of bonnet because this thing is designed to house an engine as well as some batteries. What does that mean for cabin space? We'll find out in a moment. What I can say is there is that estate version coming along for people that need lots and lots of space. But this one, it's not stingy for boot space. I can tell you that much. We've got 350 litres back here. Pretty nice flat lip. And a fairly useful size. Right, interior of the Astra Electric. It, it's the same as the interior of the new petrol Astra, which came out last year, but I hadn't sat in that. So this is new to me and I like it. And as we go through this interior, I just want you to keep the VW ID3 in your head because I feel certain that that's what they've benchmarked this car against. And I feel quite sure that Vauxhall looked at the ID3 and said, right, all the things that they didn't do very well, let's do them well. What are the main weaknesses of the ID3? It doesn't look very nice inside. It doesn't feel very nice inside. There's a lot of plasticky stuff and the user interface is very frustrating to operate. This car looks quite nice. Some interesting design motifs in here. We've got this, which they call the pure panel, which houses the two screens, sort of replicating that visor shape on the front of the car. This is a lovely looking new design of steering wheel. Amazing what a new steering wheel can do for the general look of a car's interior, nice little flat bottom, which means it's sporty, as we know. Physical buttons galore. We're on to user friendliness now. Big, easy to hit buttons on the steering wheel, a bank of buttons here to operate the climate control. You just look at that and you think, I know how that works. Isn't that nice? This user interface, much improved over early electric voxels. We had an old Mocha E long termer a while back and it was a little bit clunky. This is slick, responsive, uh, oh, I like that transition as well. That's very like, I just learned how to use PowerPoint. It does come as standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you don't even have to worry that much about operating that. You will just do it off your phone, but it's there and it looks pretty easy to use. We also get, surprisingly, on an Astra, 360 degree camera as standard, heating steering wheel and heated seat as standard. Right, back seat test. 4.4 metre long car, not a whopper multi-energy platform. So, do I fit? I do fit. That's not bad at all. Actually, I do think if you jump straight out of an ID3 or something with bespoke EV architecture, it would feel a little bit cramped by comparison in here, but I'm really quite impressed by that. I'd say that's better than I thought it was going to be. Really okay for legroom, surprisingly good for headroom. I think I could manage back here for a short to medium, even the occasional long journey. Now, just quickly before we wrap up, I just want to get into some brand strategy, nitty gritty, because I personally think Vauxhall and Stellantis in general are making some really interesting choices to enable their transition into electrification. Vauxhall is a brand known for small, affordable models. And as we know, most brands are really shying away from those when it comes to electric versions because, well, they're really, really hard to make any money off. Small cars in general are really, really hard to make any money off. So how on earth are they doing this? Well, there's a couple of things here. First of all, there is that multi-energy platform. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, my favorite EVs are built on bespoke EV architecture because you get the most space inside. But as an interim solution for a company that's trying to churn out small-ish, affordable electric cars, I think it's quite an elegant solution for the time being. There will be bespoke EV voxels in the near future, but for right now, I do kind of feel like this maybe makes sense. 
The other thing that Voxel are doing, which we've seen from Ford as well, is radically reducing the number of different cars that they make. I'm going to get my phone out for this bit because I have a sieve brain. But at the end of 2021, there were 362 different derivatives of Vauxhall that you could buy. So that's different models and then different engines and then different trim levels. 362. By the end of this year, that number will drop to 65. And it just makes sense to me. Reduce the number of models on offer, focus on making a few really good, really versatile cars. And all of this is helping Vauxhall to churn out these small electric cars that so many other brands are shying away from making. That being said, the price is not small. This car will start at £40,000, just under. And that, from memory, is about three grand more expensive than the Renault Megane E-Tech, likewise the entry-level VW ID3. It's not especially cheap, but a few things I would say on that. Number one, there is no bogo spec for the electric Astra. The petrol one gets an entry-level spec, and then a middle one, and then a top spec one. This car only has the middle and top. So potentially we see an entry level version subsequently that knocks three grand off the price. That could be nice. The other thing I would say is if indeed this car lives up to its claimed range and efficiency, well, that is a bit of a game changer. These Stellantis cars, as I mentioned, have been slightly hamstrung by the platform that they sit on, slightly lacking in the range and efficiency department. Well, this one it looks to be class leading in that department if the numbers are true. So we'll wait to see on that before forming our final judgment. It's not especially cheap, but it really does potentially look like being the best in its class in a number of ways. I think there's quite a lot to like here. I like the design. I like the straightforward, user-friendly interior. It's familiar, it's simple to use. I like the sense of quality in there, how all the buttons are nice to press. But more than anything else, I'm blown away by the alleged range and efficiency. That was something of a weak point on early Stellantis Group electric cars. And they've not just fixed it, they've turned it into a real strong point in this car. If those numbers are anywhere near what they're quoting, then this thing is blowing its rivals out the water as far as the amount of miles it's able to extract from its size of battery. What we're seeing, I think, with these V1.5 Stellantis Group EVs is a huge step up. I think this is going to be a big year for the Jeeps and the Vauxhalls of this world. Can't wait to get this thing out the road and see if it lives up to some of those bold claims. Until then, please do make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.